Aidan, thank you so much for letting us come to Ballydoyle once again ahead of uh, what promises to be another great week at, at York. How excited are you and the team here about your team going over to York? Yeah, no, looking forward to it, Ali. It's, it's a very special uh, meeting every year and very prestigious and uh, it comes at a great time of year and uh, track is always unbelievable. Um, William does a great job, welcomes everybody and um, it, it's something every, everybody looks forward to, really. And you've had already in 2023, a terrific season, both here in Ireland and also uh, in the UK. Um, I imagine that the confidence must be sky high with, you, with your horses. Yeah, they're, they're running well uh, so far, most of them, um, most of the time. Um, so it's, I suppose uh, they're staying well so far this year. And uh, yeah, they're, um, those big races are, are hard competing in them kind of uh, week after week, but uh, so far, so, so good. Do you feel like you need a certain type of horse for York? You need a fast horse. You need a, you need a good horse, really. Um, for any of those big championship races, you just need a very good horse um, where there's very few holes in. Uh, pace is always usually on and strong and, and the ability will out at the end. So you, you need a very good horse, really. Um, and before we talk about your, your squad this year, in terms of atmosphere on a race day, sense of occasion, where does York rank in, in your eyes and, and is the atmosphere comparable to anything? No, it's, it's very different, York. It's, people are very friendly, very homely, everybody. It's, uh, walk into the parade ring after a race, it's, it's lovely. Uh, it's, people are always kind of all around the parade ring. Um, everyone, like I said, it's, it's a very different atmosphere and you kind of have to really go there to feel it. Um, but I think even throughout the day, uh, all the people on the gates and all the racing public, uh, it, it's very it's very different. York is a very different uh, race course than anywhere really in the world. And unique for the horsemen and women involved in the, the walk across the Naves, Maya, saddling up, etc. Uh, do you like the, if, I don't know whether it presents a challenge, but do you like that process at York? Yeah, I think I think so. It's different. Uh, like it's a long walk across, across the middle of the track and uh, um, the stable yard is lovely. Um, it's just everything about it is very different, I think. Um, to even to watch the race where the stand is situated is, is different. You're looking out on the track and you're looking down at the winning post and you have a great view of the track the whole way and it's very level. Um, so you, you get a great feel about a horse there, really. How would you assess your, your squad this year in terms of strength compared to recent years? Yeah, I think we have chances. I, I don't ever take anything for granted. Uh, we have chances going there. Uh, like I said, it's very hard to win races there. Um, we we always hope, uh, never expect. Um, so we're hoping. Uh, like obviously, the main one looks to be Paddington this year. He he looks uh, very good at the moment, and everything he's doing is is very very good so far. Well, let's focus on Paddington then. I mean, I was going to say he's been a revelation this year, but when I spoke to Ryan after he won at Goodwood, he said that. This has always kind of been expected from Paddington, and yet he sort of started life relative humble beginnings, handicap company right to the to the very top. Did yeah. you always know you had a superstar we, in your hands? Yeah, we always thought he was good. I, I think we sent him to Ascot for a conditioned race or a very good maiden first time out, and that would be very unusual for us to do that. Um, he went there and he obviously got stage fright and, and didn't uh, turn up on the day. Um, but he came back and we were very disappointed with him. Um, so obviously we came back and gave him a good break because we knew that wasn't him. Um, and then he had one more run that year at the end of the at the end of the season at the Curra and won very impressively. So then we decided, listen, we put him away now and, and look forward to him next year. And um, wintered very well. Uh, he was doing everything really nice. And obviously we were trying to start all the horses in whatever races we could get them into. And um, there's. Free handicap in Nace, it's, it's, a, it's a great race, the Madrid handicap, it's a three-year-old only, and, and he got in, I think, just at the top. So with seven furlongs, ground was slow. Um, we just thought it was a lovely start, an off point for him. Uh, so he started there and, and won very nicely. He didn't win extra special, but won nicely. Um, there was a couple of well-fancied horses in it, and uh, still with top weight, he, he won very nicely. And obviously then, I suppose, the rest was history with him, really. Well, well, let's just go through that this season because he's won the Irish 2000, the St James's Palace, the um, the Eclipse, and the Sussex, proving versatile in different aspects for all of those all of those wins. I, I guess the the question that some people might ask is whether the form is 
really, really rock solid, and I'm not crabbing the horse in any way, but how strong do you think the form is in terms of the horses he's beaten in what has been an incredibly dominant season? Yeah, I'm not sure really. Um, like I never, we don't ever really look at form or what's happening around him or what horses are running against him. Um, we always hope in all the big races that the best horses run, um, really, and are very happy to get beat all the time. But everybody always wants to see the best horses together so we know where we're going next time and for the next step and what we're going to do. So I suppose he has done everything we've asked him. Uh, he's very professional. He's quick breaker. He travels well. He's very tactical. He's a lot of tactical speed. And uh, he's um, a lot of class. So really we're looking forward to every race with him. We don't really look at form after or before. Um, and obviously uh, run him and give him every chance to show his best, really. That's what the way we look at it with him. Um, and hopefully the, the best horses that are around that will turn up for him the next day and, and we'll, we'll learn more. I think it's probably a huge compliment to the horse's ability that the jockeys are trying different things outside of the norm to try and beat him. The case in point being sort of Frankie on in spiral, pressing up on the inside at a very early point in the race. And yet he sort of chews up those questions, spits them out and says, I'm... I'm the best, but he's going to be asked plenty of other questions in, in the international with some really good horses taking him I think, on. I think so. And like obviously, he ended up leading the last day, which, which probably wasn't ideal, but he's happy to lead. Ryan is happy to lead, and he goes out with a very clear mind. Um, he's very confident on him. Uh, he, he doesn't mind what happens in the race um, with him. Um, like you always feel a lot of confidence from Ryan when he rides him. You know, mm. he's, he's, he's very independent. Uh, he's, like I say, he's happy to get a lead. He's happy to make his own running. Um, and uh, hopefully that will be the way. Whatever way it will fall, will fall. But listen, like we're no, under no illusions to Judmont is a very difficult race to win. Very good horses always there. And there'll be very good older horses. And uh, we're going to learn more about him and he's going to learn more. I love the sort of weight of public support he's getting. Now, obviously, as Ryan said in his interview as well, it's probably to do with his name and Paddington turning up. But are you enjoying the sort of public really getting behind this horse this season? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, it's unbelievable. Obviously, Sue named him, and what an incredible name it was. Um, I remember the first day when um, Matt asked me about marmalade sandwiches, he kind of threw me a little bit. So <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, like, but I, I've really... Have you watched it. the film since? Yeah, you know all about Paddington now. Yeah, <laughs> it's incredible, yeah. So, um, uh, listen, sure, it's an incredible name, and... and it, it suits the horse really. He's a very independent thinker. Um, he's he's uh, he, like he doesn't get bothered about anything. Um, like he, he makes his own mind up about everything, which is very unusual. He he can be aggressive. He can be fast. He he can be relaxed. But he's very independent horse. Could he be an art horse? It, it could be. Like John always said to me that this horse is bred to get a mile and a half. You know. So um, I don't know. Um, that's what he always said, and obviously nobody, no, nobody in the world knows pedigrees like John. And that mm. was he, he always felt that at the start, from the very word that he could get a mile and a half. So I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what way the lads will go with him, how far they'll ask him to go. Um, and I suppose it will be interesting when he goes to York and, and has to run the mile and a quarter in, in, in York, you know. So we're going to learn a lot more about him. He's obviously had comparisons to some really, like, to, to some all time greats already, given what he's done showing versatility, etc. Do you think if he was to, and I know there's a few ifs and buts to this question, if he was to win the Judmont and then go and win an arc, he would be considered an all-time great? Yeah, I suppose like, I'm, that's another thing that we don't ever really think about too much. Like We always take one race at a time and uh, see where that brings everybody. Uh, I know the lads are having great enjoyment with him, is, mm. which is really the reality, is that's what it's all about. Um, I think at, at their stage in life, they... It's all about enjoying what they're doing and being involved. And obviously they've got us all to where we are today um, by building up the team and bringing on everything as it comes. So for us, really, that's the important thing. And, and it's incredible that um, the public and everybody has joined in behind them. Um, I suppose it's, it's, it's lovely kindness uh, comes from the whole thing, you know. So everybody enjoys the kids. Everyone loves Paddington. And uh, and it's 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 a feel of kindness. It's very unusual, really, that we have uh, we haven't felt that before. You know, to go racing and the way everyone is about him. You know, so it, it's um, I, I think it's incredible, really. And it's a, just the final question on that. It's amazing because in a world where that's not always the case, horses yeah. can do that, can't they? Oh, absolutely. And 
like it's when you see the little kids and their mums and dads all looking for pointing out there's Paddington and talking about him it's it's just very unusual um it it's more than it's bigger than racing um the people that are talking about him and and I suppose the feel and the, the love everybody has for him uh, let's talk about some of your others let's focus on the voltager because you've got a strong hand seemingly in that We'll start with Continuous, who was second to King of Steel at, at Royal Ascot. What did you make of that run? Yeah, we were very happy with him there. It was a very slowly run race, which didn't suit him in Ascot. Uh, he wants a strong, even pace. He's a good traveller. Um, we were very happy the way the race was run that he finished second. Um, he's a lovely, kind horse as well. He, he had a little break and he's just back to start again. He could get further than a mile and a half and he's unusual. He's a Japanese bred horse again. So um, we're looking forward to him. Um, really looking forward to the voltage of him. Right, ran all right in the Dante as well, so he's been to your... Yeah, absolutely, and it was a very good run again in the Dante. Mm. He was just about made the Dante, um, and uh, then he he went to um, the French Derby, and we just felt it went very fast up front, and Ryan felt that the horses in the French Derby, it, it mightn't be, uh, the form mightn't work out the way the French Derby finished. He kind of just felt that everybody followed the pace, and... Uh, I think the winner came from a long ways back, so it's going to be interesting to see all those horses run again. I get the sense you're quite excited about seeing him in the Voltage. Yeah, we are, but he will improve plenty, but we're looking forward right. to him running it over a mile and a half in, in, in the Voltage. Will your Irish Derby runner-up Adelaide River go to the Voltage? It's possible, not definite. It probably depends a lot on, on continuous how he is, and if he looks very well and everything's going well, he, he might not. Uh, he could go somewhere different, and we're looking at next year for him as well, so... But we're not in any rush with him, and he, and he has had plenty of racing. Yeah, he was second in the Irish Derby. There's lots talked about that that race. He was subsequently second at Longchamp in the Grand Prix de Paris. Um, he's been hitting the crossbar this horse. Yeah, but he is progressing. He's a very big horse by Australia, and we always felt, felt next year was going to be his year. Um, he, he had good form last year, and his form is better this year, and we always felt that he could be better again next year and he could be like Duke of Marmalade. He, right. You know, Duke of Marmalade kept hitting the bar as a three-year-old and yeah. when he went from three to four he just changed a lot and this horse could be a little bit like that. That's very interesting. What about Alexandropoulos because a lot was sp sort of spoken about him going into this season. Yeah, he, he's a very good horse. We, we thought he was very good and he got injured when he ran in Leprous and he got beat and didn't get out again. He's re nearly ready to go. Um, just about, uh, he just might make a run in the Voltager, and but will improve drastically from there to the ledger if that's if he that's where he goes. Um, we always thought a mile and a half further will will really suit him, but if it doesn't all happen this year, it'll be next year. But we'd love to run him in the Voltager, but there will be drastic improvement from there to the ledger. He was sent off four to five for the Bally Sacks. Um, Clearly, you and the lads had real high hopes of him probably being a classic horse earlier than maybe the ledger later on in the season. But do you still hold him in that esteem? Yeah, but he's yeah, very, he's lovely. He's a great mover. He does everything right, and and he he we always thought he was a definite classic horse. Is Denmark going to go more likely for the Melrose? He, he might. He's a little bit laid back and a little bit babyish, and we just thought maybe the Melrose might suit him a little bit better. He's not really there yet, but we've a little bit of time to go still. So. Uh, we're for forcing him to be, um, but he's al also going to be better next year. Right. He's got a similar-ish profile to Alexandropoulos. Yeah, he he's quicker. Alexandropoulos is quicker at home than he is. Right. He's lazy. Um, he's not really grown up yet. He's still a kind of a teenager. Um, but we're trying to push him on and get him to grow up a little bit. Can you give us an insight into that? Um, and you don't have to sort of specify with Denmark, but in general, when you have a... A horse who's lazy, a bit of a teenager. How do you, the master, sort of get into their head? Yeah, he's a bit of a messer. He's um, like he's always, even though he's working, he's watching over the fence and he's watching who's looking at and looking at him, and <laughs> he's not concentrating. Um, he's big and he's powerful, and easy thing is to geld them, but we don't geld them. We let them grow up. Like geld them, kind of, kind of grounds them and changes their whole life, you know. So we kind of get them to bring bring them on and kind of get them to come on with their work and to grow up, um, and that's really what. A lot of those horses are, uh, if you can have the patience and give them the time, you know. So he's he's a big baby, really, but he's a kind of a he's um he's a bold baby, if you know what I mean. Mm. You know, he's not he's not uh, he try things and but he's not evil, but he he just he's always messing rather than maturing at the moment. Does that happen on the race day as well? Do those sort of characteristics? Do you yeah. see it on race yeah, day? Yeah, a little bit. Like when you saw him first time, he, he won at Nace and he dropped right after the line and. Um, but he ran some very good race after that, you know, so that's the way he is. He, he He's, um, like I say, he's just a little bit mentally immature. 
Uh, it sounds like me at school, to no, be honest. Just... <laughs> sounds like a few of us, to, to be fair. <laughs> anyway, yeah. moving on. Yes. Um, Yorkshire Oaks, yeah. Save the Last Dance, was very good at Epsom, despite running uh, second that day. S subsequently, I mean, it was a brilliant ride to win the Irish Oaks, but really hit the line well that day when it didn't look likely she was, she was going to win. Yeah, she's a lovely mare. She's big, genuine filly, uh, gets a mile and a half very well. Um, ideally, she might have preferred a stronger pace at the Curra. Um, she, she gets into a big kind of roll and gallop. Mm. And uh, at the Curra, just maybe, it, maybe this first two, three furlongs would have preferred them to be stronger. Um, but she got going. Listen, Ryan knew then what was happening and he was very aware of it, which was really brilliant from him. He, he knew he didn't panic when the pace started quicken and she kind of didn't struggle but she just started to get a little bit flat on him and he gave her time to get into gear and uh, and he felt he, he won very well on her you know so like it's a very difficult thing and very hard thing for a jockey to do when like you're that short a price and uh, everyone else is going away from you and looks like you can't get going but he didn't panic and he gave her a chance to go up through the gears and he felt that when she hit top gear that she would mow them down uh, like even mm. at a very late stage and that's what she did do. York should really suit her. I think so. Big gallop and track. And York, that's why York suits a very good horse. Um, there's no messing there. The rhythm usually gets going early. Um, and uh, I think it, it would really suit her, really. And, and just on that, Ryan has obviously been one of the best jockeys in the world for many, many years now. You've had a great association for, for a number of years. Um, but I, don't, I get the sense from him that, one, he's sort of slightly different to us at, in the media, he's being far more vocal, which is great because his insight is invaluable to you, I'm sure, but to the viewers at home. But he seems to be riding at the absolute top of his game. Can you remember a season where Ryan's ridden as consistently well as he has? Yeah, he's getting better, Ryan. He's he, and I think he will do for the next four years. Five really? Years. Yeah. He will. And why? What do you put that down uh, to? He's so professional. He's so um, analytic. He's so hard on himself. He, he he never accepts that that's as good as he can be or. Like he's he's so hungry, uh, he's so dedicated. He's uh, he he just absolute professional uh, in every way. He pushes himself to the last. He does everything to get the best out of himself, and he tries to get the best out of horses. He doesn't forget a thing. He's a very clear mind, so he remembers horses. And and obviously the experience. A lot of people when they get experience, they forget about it. But he doesn't. He remembers. You know. So like for me, like he's getting better. You know. And and. Like I think flat jockeys won't be at their peak until they're 44, 45, you know, so. Wow. Um, and, and when you have somebody as committed and as dedicated and as professional and, and with the ability that Brian, uh, Ryan has, like it's who knows where he's going to end up, you know, just incredible really. Do you see a lot of you in him? Ah, listen, Ryan is an incredibly talented fella, talented fella, you know, he's, he's a great fella to deal with. Uh, he, 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 like he's so uh, forthcoming with information to everybody and, and like you're only kind of starting to see it in the media now um, because obviously he's maturing and he's getting a little bit easier and you know a bit mm. more confident um, but he, he, he's an incredible fella mm. um, you know so and we're just so lucky that, uh, that we have him really that he, he agrees to come over to us. He'll likely ride say the last dance I assume but you also have warm heart in the Yorkshire Oaks. She was fifth in the Irish Oaks Ribblesdale winner as well. She's a talented filly. Yes, yeah, she's a, yeah, um, the same, the last day she um, ended up back a little bit in the car mm. and maybe when you're back that, when you're back a little bit when the pace is not strong, it's hard to get into the pace and so we think she's better than her car run. Uh, she will be very happy if the ground gets quicker. The ground's a little bit slow maybe at the car but she has form and slow ground as well so she's a lovely filly. Um, Would there be a, w would it be very clear in your opinion that, s as the market I'm sure will suggest, save the last dance is clear of warm heart or do you think they're closer than the market might give them credit for? I know, I think that there is no, I, I think she's the best filly um, say, and we haven't seen the best of save the last dance yet at all. Right. Um, so it's only coming. Um, she's big, she's long and she's scopy. Um, so I, I think we probably haven't seen everything that suits her really yet. Um, so we're looking forward to that. In the Lonsdale broom, will he will he go there? Yeah, we, we're thinking of doing that. Um, he loves York. He's a mm. big galloping horse. Two miles is probably his trip. 
Um, nice ground is what he'd love. Um, but he loves York. He's, he has that big swing and stride, and it suits him very well. Uh, has he been a bit disappointing, in your opinion, since yeah. Maidan? Yeah, well, I suppose we ran. His, he got trapped a little bit wide in the Gold Cup, and the trip was probably a bit too far. And Then the ground got too soft for him in Goodwood. So he's had excuses. Yeah, exactly. That's what we think. Like, he's a very genuine horse. Yeah, and York plays to his strengths, as you say. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, if the ground ends up nice for him there, and he, he loves the, the rhythm of the race, he lovely, loves the flat track as well. And just finally, what have you made of this? Obviously, Kipprios isn't, hasn't been around this season, but what have you made of this, the staying division in his absence? Yeah, no, so listen, it's, the staying division is a tough division always, and sometimes a very dominant stayer comes along, and, but that hasn't yet happened yet this year. Um, so I think there's a lot of very high-class horses there, but just none of them have been real dominant yet. How is Kiprios? Kiprios is good. Uh, I think he's done about his 10th or 12th piece of work back oh, great. This, this week. So Brilliant. He's, he's getting there. Um, his movement is good, and but obviously you're, you're always like obviously on tender hooks with him because mm. he had he did get injured, and and as they work increases the work gets faster and you know but we're very happy so far Patrick who rides him out is very happy uh, Rachel has been riding him in her work uh, Derek and uh, Donor are in charge of him so um, yeah so far so good um, where will we see him Fazzy looks after him we're thinking about the Irish ledger so hoping that he might start there um, right. listen it's a big race to start a horse but we'd be starting him with the view to getting him started if you know what I mean OK, just a few other races to talk about, if we can. In the Nunthorpe, Aesop's Fable and the Antarctic are in it. Yes, yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing for it, whether they'll make it in time. Both of them had breaks. Uh, Antarctic had a break after Ascot, and, and Aesop's Fable did have an after his last race as well. So, listen, we're, we're trying to get them there. But like, like um, we said before, it's very competitive, and you want to be at the top of your farm going there. And obviously... Uh, John Quinn's filly. I feel princess. Yeah, she's yeah. very good filly, you know, so she's, she's exciting. Really. And there's a couple of two year olds potentially in there carrying no weight, which makes yeah, it. Yeah, no, absolutely. But, right? Yeah, absolutely. But she looks like an unbelievable filly, doesn't she? She's been a star, and for John Fairley, a, a homebred to, yeah. to be doing what yeah. she's doing is yeah, great. In, incredible, really. Absolutely. Mm. Um, then in the gym crack, Alabama and Edwardian are entered. Yes. yes. Um, Edwardian was second on debut at Tipperary. Yes. Ryan was on board at Nace last time yes. out and got the job done. Yeah, he liked him. He said he's fast. Yeah, he's an uh, uh, very like it's an influ it's big influence uh, for non A's. They're always very quick and he's a big powerful horse. Um he's a brother to Fozzie's Philly that won the group one in, in America. So um yeah he's that's it could suit him as well. Um Ryan took his time on him in Nace over five furlongs and he quickened up very well. Mm. Do you, do you hold him in very high regard? Yeah, we, we think he's nice. He's big and, and we don't really know what he is yet. Um, because he's big, we have tried not to force him. Yeah. But he's done everything very well since, since we started. Um, obviously, when you look at York, there's a lot of prize money on offer. Yes. You've spoken about the occasion and the competitive nature of the racing. Yes. There is the small matter of you in quite an interesting battle with Mr. John and Thady Gosden for yes. the... For the trainers' championship in the in the UK, how much is that on your mind? I'm sure you'll say it's not at all, but but yeah. is it anywhere in your no, mind? No, never, never. It never is. But we we why not? Uh, well, we we have to put the horses first always, and and not nothing else ever comes in front of the horse, um, and and that's the way the lads always have wanted it, and and we do what suits the horses always. Like we would love reading about it, or if anyone was trying to stir up a storm or anything like but those things like that's all fun really um and but say you say you win the international yes and you go ahead of john yes. for example john and thady yes you john wouldn't say to you right we'll get your next race there wouldn't be any banter no, between no, you no. two. I, no i would all i i always love and i really respect and i really am happy for whoever beats us in any race and i really mean that and i always wish everybody the very best to look before every race mm. and, and i really mean we it. see you do it it's yeah and I, and I really mean it because it's so difficult for everybody to win a race and we know how hard it is and like we will do our best and we won't give anybody an inch anywhere and they know that and but i'd always want them to have the best to look and sometimes it falls for us, sometimes it doesn't fall for us. But everybody has to live, everyone has to enjoy it, and, and that's the way it is. And nobody can win all the time. Sure. And, and that's what keeps racing going. And I, re I really mean it. I'm always very happy for whoever wins the race. And I might not always see them after because there could be a, a huddle of people around them and I wouldn't get into them. But I'd always see them after and, and say, very well done. Because it, it is so tough. 
Um, like, mm. believe me, and nobody knows more than we do, you know. So, um, and it's it's competitive, and that's the way it has to be, you know. It's, mm. it's that's what makes racing really. If I can pull it back to some of the horses now that we won't see at York, but hopefully see very soon. And the first horse I'm going to ask you about is unsurprising, um, August Rodan. Where are we at with him? Has has anything come to light? Yeah, no. There's, listen, obviously, it, it it was total different horse. Uh, it all went totally wrong. Uh, another typical day. The pace was on. The pace was strong. Uh, the ground got soft. Um, there was absolutely nowhere to hide. He was drawn wide, and Ryan had no chance, no choice, only to place him in the race where he was. So he was last wide on the outside in a very strongly run competitive race on soft ground. So all those things probably didn't suit him. Uh, he came off the bridle very early, and I think he startled Ryan a bit, um, that he came off the bridle that early. And uh, obviously straight away, uh, Ryan's alarm bell started ringing. And obviously Ryan had such respect for the horse and such confidence in him, he, he could not uh, believe that that could happen. So obviously Ryan's uh, straight away reaction was to protect the horse, which was the right thing. And obviously when it did happen, Ryan taught for a few seconds and then when you think for a few seconds then you're nearly out of the race in those type of races and, and he did the right thing then he, he kind of more or less eased them back and eased them up. Mm. Um, so we, we put it down to just one of those things that went totally wrong. Um, so nothing physical came to light? No, we, 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 we haven't found anything yet um, but that doesn't say that we won't find something. Mm. Um, he, he, he came out of the race very well and he was a little bit stiff which most horses will be after that but nothing of any consequence really um so we think it was just one of those days that went wrong and um um we we maybe i shouldn't have ran him maybe i walked like we walked the ground and i was just worried about the ground for a baby three-year-old um like he's a beautiful moving horse very all slick and everything about him was slick and like obviously it turned into a, a grand national you know, did that though, yeah, didn't and, and that's the reality. Like when you're asking a horse with his class to like have to fight like really dirty and heavy the way that turned out to be, um, Ryan pulled him out of fight before it got into a fight. Mm. So I'd say it was a very tough, grueling race for horses. It was but a bit, bit of a rumble in the jungle. I'd say it, it was. And the two horses won a very well trained, very hard horses that got a trip very well and they were very fit. Um, and I say big credit to the lads, but like our fella had maybe two was too classy or too babyish for that at that time. Uh, I think I think and I think all those combination of things. But we, we'll see the next time. So it's going to be very interesting. Next time will be probably Leperstown, I'd say Irish Champions. I, I'd imagine because he has time to recover, and uh, so we'll see. But obviously he has to go through all the gears and all the work to see what uh, how he is and will he be able for that. So that's what we're hoping. Do you do you um. I, don't, I think it's probably impossible to quantify, but how much of an impact do you put on psychology in horses? Do you think that does that concern you about him having that bad experience like he did at Newmarket? Yeah, no, again? yeah, no, I don't think so. He didn't have a bad experience because Ryan pulled him up, right? But but um, if 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 he had a continued and had to get stuck into him very strongly and and maybe finished a lot closer, obviously, than he, where he could have had a very bad experience, but he didn't give him a chance to have that. Yeah. Um, but obviously, the next day he runs, he's going to be a little bit thinking like halfway in the race, am I easing out of it now or am I not? Mm. But he didn't have a bad experience because Ryan didn't give that to him, which was 100% the right thing. And only somebody with his confidence and experience was able to do that. Um, like Ryan pulled him up at the line, you know, so... Mm. Um, he got straight off. I was down just, there for the Yeah, incredible, really. Like how quick he taught, and he put the horses well fair first, and the rest in second. You know, and he didn't think about money the horse was worth or anybody else or us or anybody. He put the horse first, and which was the right thing. And, and that comes back to what you're saying: the horses absolutely come first here at Ballyd. A hundred percent, and that's what we've always done. And the same with the races: what's the right thing for the horses? What we always try and do. Let's talk about some of the two-year-olds, if we can. City of Troy, his form has taken an almighty boost with what happened at Goodwood. And when he won at Newmarket, I mean, he's got everyone talking. Is, yeah. is, he, is he right up there in terms of excitement levels for a two-year-old at, at this stage of his career? Yeah, he, he looks very different. Um, I remember when John bought uh, Justify, he said to me that he wanted a classic horse. Uh, he didn't want a sprinter. He didn't want a stayer. He wanted a pure classic horse and that's why I think he went after Justified to buy him. Um, I think they said he couldn't be bought, but everything he looked 
uh, everything he wanted in a horse was in him. Uh, he, he, he had the speed, he raced in all the Triple Crown races, and he was massive. Uh, he had a big stride, he was made like a big sprinter. And he said to me that this horse could do America on the dirt and he could do mm. Europe on the grass. So everything was what he was hoping might come, it looks like is in this horse. Um, I know the American trainers are telling the lads that he's a dirt horse for the juvenile. Um, and that's exactly what John said to me at the start before he got justified that what he was hoping could happen. So he, he's very unusual. He, he's a big stride. He's he's 16-1 but doesn't look it. Um, he's a, a lot of natural speed. He he very happy to make the run. He's very happy to get a lead. And what's very unusual about him, um, when he's going to the line, he's only getting into gear. So mm. that's a very strange thing. So that means he can go harder earlier in any race. And um, Ryan said he never got a fright before, like he got at the Curra. He Like he galloped past the line and he wouldn't pull up going to the wall. Like he said, he just started opening up. <laughs> so he said that never happened to him before. And he was so nimble, he was able to get around at the wall without falling. You know, so it, it just looks very different. And Ryan is, is riding him very confident as well. He went to Newmarket, he, he, like he popped him out and let him go along. And the more people or the more horses that joined him and came around him was going to be the better because they were going to force him forward. So they were going to force the pace to be faster. So he made sure in Newmarket, I think, that he wouldn't have to get into the same problem having to try to pull him up after the line. So he, he was, uh, but the same thing, he galloped through the line in Newmarket again. Yeah. So it's very, uh, very unusual. Um, Seamus and uh, John are in charge. Um, Dean rides him all the time, Dean Gallagher. Like yeah. an, an incredibly experienced man as well. Sure and is. so um, that's what we think helps bring on these horses. And he's a homebred out of a great mare, you know, so he looks very special. A couple of points to, to pick up on there. Would you then seriously consider running him on the dirt I, I this think, year? Uh, well, I think it's definitely a possibility from listening to John. Really? I, I In the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Dirt? Well, it, it is possible. The plan at the moment is that he goes to the national stakes in Ireland. And then after that, who knows? it? But it is definitely possible because I know it's on his mind. Wow. And, and obviously that would be to really stamp justify as a turf and dirt stallion and in the city of choice seemingly you've got absolutely the right horse to do that well uh, who knows what's the right horse but it looks like he could be um uh, we know from dirt racing you need five six furlong pace you have to go hard early and you have to cruise and you have to keep going so it looks like at the moment he could have a mm. lot of those things and then would you come back for a classic campaign uh, I would, in I, europe i would imagine so ali but like obviously the lads decide those things, but I would imagine and hope for us that's what would happen. <laughs> uh, and do you see him as a horse that has got all the attributes to be a Guineas and then a Derby horse? Uh, listen, if we have a Triple Crown horse at the moment, he looks like that type of horse. Um, like he could get like a Guineas trip easy. I'd imagine he could get a mile and a half and he could even get further. Wow. Do what his dad did. It, listen, it would be incredible. <laughs> but he, he, like obviously we would try and ask him to do that here we've never had a triple crown horse here and that clearly from the chat about august road at the start of the year those very strong comments there it's clearly really in the forefront of everyone's I, mind I, here i think it is like obviously dr o'brien had Nijinsky here mm. and we always hoped that we might get something like him and like it's an incredible thing to be able to do um so uh, it, it would be unbelievable unbelievable for the lads really if, if it did if they could get a horse to do it but it's very difficult and every year goes by you see how difficult it is yeah. Uh, the final question is, it looks like he just floats over the surface. And actually at Newmarket, I know that this is sort of laughable, what I'm about to say. He reminded me a bit of Frankel, how all the others tried to go with him early. And he just went away from them, almost as if he wasn't breaking a sweat. It was effortless. And that's when you watch a really good horse at work. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. And, and that's it exactly. But really, he's better to be taken on because he's, his stride is so long. He, he doesn't really know what speed he's going. So, but when horses come up beside him, that's when they'll move out of their comfort zone and he'll only move into his. The, the other horse I want to mention, two-year-old co um, Henry Longfellow. Yes, yeah, he's a lovely He's horse. out of minding, isn't he? He is. Uh, yeah, he looks very nice. Uh, PC rides him out all the time. And listen, obviously, minding was an incredibly special guy, Leo Mayer. And he, he's, um, he was very, Ryan was very happy with him at the Curra. He, he, Ryan is, doesn't get excited. But he was excited about him when he got off, got off him at the car. And I knew that Joseph thinks the world of the second horse. So uh, 
the plan with him is he goes to the Futurity next and then uh, we'll see after that. But he, he looks very smart horse. Um, and then finally, Yalang Yalang, have I pronounced that yeah, correctly? Yeah, she's lovely. She she won in Leperstown again the other day. She will miss the Depotan and she'll go straight to the Meigler uh, because we have some another filly going to the Depotan. But she's a, a typical Frankel. She's very like his, our dad. She, she's a big, long stride and she's a big backside on her. Um, she hasn't got a lead yet, but will be happier getting a lead when that does happen. Um, she strikes me as a horse with a tremendous amount of ability and we might not have seen the best of her yet. Is that fair? I'd say so, yeah. That's... Uh, there's, there's no doubt, I'd say, she, like I say, she will be way better getting a lead when that time comes. OK. Um, thank you very much for your thoughts on your horses. Um, I'm just going to pull it back to York if I can. Yeah. Who do you think you're... I mean, obviously, Paddington's got an outstanding chance in the Judd Monet International, but outside of Paddington, who would you say um, is your best chance of a winner yeah, there? Yeah, right. obviously, you never know what's going to win or what can win, but obviously, I think our best two chances are, are obviously, at the moment, is uh, Paddington and the save the last dance like both of those uh, Paddington is, is coming along lovely and like whatever will be will be um, but he, everything's going well from so far and he's in the he's in the York programme at the moment and everything's going well uh, Adrian's very happy with him and the filly we always thought that somewhere like York would suit her um, she's big powerful filly and if she got York and the ground wasn't it was nice and safe or like you would look forward to see her running it's amazing, isn't it? Because we come here year after year and every year there's a production line of just the absolute best. This year, Paddington, Save the Last Dance, August Rodan, etc. But on a personal level, do you ever sit sit down of an evening and pinch yourself that you're the custodian of these great horses? For someone who loves horses as much as you do, how, how does it make you feel to year on year be, be doing what you do? Yeah, no, like obviously we feel very privileged to be in the position we're in and we don't take it for granted in any, for any way and for any minute because we know that that's what it is. Um, like obviously the, John and Sue and all the lads, they're, they're producing these horses. They're breeding them, they're, they're mating them, they're like, um, and they're rearing them. Um, like it's just incredible like I don't I can never I don't think there was ever any breeder anywhere ever in the world that have been doing this mm -hmm. and it's year after year good after, horse after good horse and it looks like the horses are getting better mm -hmm. you know it's incredible but it's a lot of time and work and goes into it um, like um, obviously uh, like I would see like John would be thinking about this at 12 o'clock in the night time mm -hmm. The matings and and all his and all his family and MV and all the, all the family and everybody that's involved it it never stops it, and and, it, and it's a passion. And which, it's interesting what you said about wanting a classic winner because there's been a bit of a push in recent years for sort of precocity, speed, two-year-olds to come through, but yeah. still very much that the m middle distance classic. Uh, well, it's a classic uh, generation measures the pedigrees every year. And classic horses are horses that have speed that can carry over a distance. You know, the others like are quick and fast and precocious, but that won't last. It's classic blood lasts, and that's where all the blood really comes comes from. And so if you can have that kind of blood that forward and in everyone's face on every day, that's when the breed will improve. Um, but it's a lot of tinkering with, and there's a lot of change in the pedigrees and mixing blends into pedigrees and it's it's a it's a, a lot of hard work but we're just so lucky that the lads are so passionate about it that, that like obviously John and Sue and all their family and, and Michael and Derek and, and now it's it's um yeah George and Peter they're, they're and all their wives and families that they're all so passionate about it um they don't need to do this but they're passionate and they love it and uh, and we're just so lucky that they're doing it here in Ireland and uh, and uh, we're all a little small, playing a small little part in it, really. You're playing a slightly bigger part than a small no. part, but you know, you know what I mean. I yeah, know, yeah, I know and, and like obviously, like for myself and Amarine, the lads, we lived here and we were amongst it all the time and in the middle of it. And, and all the people that work every day, like it's, it's a, listen, it's, it's a passion and it's a, for us, it's, it's a privilege, really. Mm. Um, and special credit as well to the naming operation because Paddington's given us so much joy this year and we wish him and all your runners the very best of luck at York and Aidan, once again, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure, Ali. Thank you.